This is a continuation in a video series on the Ralph steam engine. In this video, we are machining the engine for Ralph. The engine for Ralph is pretty simple. It's primarily made up of the steam port plus an engine mount and bearings for the flywheel axle. There is no sliding steam valve as the action of the steam port takes care of that in a wobbler engine like Ralph is. Construction notes describing the part and the machining operations can be found at the Eclectic Builds website, listed in the description. To start, a piece of hard brass is cut from bar stock. The face of the port block is prepared for marking using blue die chem. And then the layout lines are marked using the height gauge and an angle block. Holes at the intersection of the lines are marked with a prick punch. In this case, it is a spring-loaded punch, which works fine on softer materials like brass. Two 60 thousandths of an inch holes are drilled using a number 53 drill bit. Then a number 33 bit is used to drill the center hole for the pivot pin. And a number 52 drill bit is used to create a rivet hole lower on the port block. Two more rivet holes will be transferred from the engine mount later and three of them will be used to fix the port block to the engine mount. Finally, a 1 8 inch hole is countersunk on the steam inlet to take the steam pipe from the boiler. Then it's time to apply markout die on the other side of the port block and take it back to the height gauge to mark out a recess. The recess on the port block face is milled out to complete the profile of the port block. Two bearings are required to support the flywheel axle, so a piece of round brass stock is faced off, and the diameter turned to size. The bearing is centre drilled and then drilled with a number 31 drill bit and later finished with a 1 8 inch reamer. The shoulder is turned down on the bearing block to fit the engine mount. Which is used to test the fit. We are looking for a sliding fit that will later be soldered. The bearing is then parted off. The same operations are performed on the second bearing, but that footage has been omitted. This is the engine mount. To confuse all of us, the British refer to this as an engine standard. The faces on the engine mount that will take the flywheel bearings are tin. This is the port block with the engine mount. Two other rivet holes were transferred from the engine mount with a transfer punch and then drilled. Both pieces are tinned at this point. The port block is riveted to the engine mount with three copper rivets. I don't have a rivet set, so the vice had to suffice.
the lower rivet required the most attention as it has to sit flush with the face of the port block. The port block is then heated and both tin surfaces flow together to complete the joint between them. The bearing blocks are then soldered to the engine mount. A drill bit is used to align both of the bearing blocks so that the position of the engine mount can be fixed and mounting hole positions transferred to the firebox. Both holes were drilled and tapped to attach the engine mount. With the engine mount bolted in place on the firebox, the two bearings are reamed to size and in alignment with each other. The cylinder block that was machined earlier needs to be lapped against the steam port to ensure both faces are coplanar. Brasso is used as a lapping compound here. If the two faces needed more work, then valve grinding place could have been used, but in this case, the Brasso was totally sufficient. The pivot block is used as the axis for the lapping operation and the two faces are lapped together, checking for high spots and fit. The steam pipe is bent to shape to connect the port block to the boiler. Once the fit works properly, the steam pipe is soldered to the port block and then to the boiler. All right. Please like this video to increase the number of people who will get to see it. And if you'd like to see the Ralph steam engine come to life in further videos, hit the subscribe button.